angry mob attacks MP over CR slur. Single mom and boyfriend remanded over son's death. I'm Desri Gasper and this is Kappa News. What is happening in Parliament? The war of words between Pase Salah MP and Shah Alam MP led to an angry mob confronting Khalid Samad at the Parliament grounds this morning. Shah Alam MP Khalid Samad was attacked by an angry group from the Pase Salah Amno Youth Division who were unhappy that he called their MP Datuk Sri Tajuddin Abdul Rahman Menteri Sial. The scuffle occurred as soon as Khalid got down from his vehicle, which was parked next to the entrance of the Dewan Rakyat. Some even tried punching the opposition lawmaker, but it was the security officers that took the blows. Mengaku dia orang dia adalah anak kepada Pasir Salak kerana dia kata kenapa kamu mengatakan bapa saya sial ya? uh, Itu merupakan satu uh, pengalaman yang uh, bagi saya hanya mengesahkan lagi lah ya? uh, Apa yang saya sebutkan ya? uh, iaitu satu sikap yang uh, tidak uh, bertanggungjawab uh, yang, yang ditunjukkan uh, pada pagi ini Ianya amat uh, amat uh, tidak wajar dan tidak patut uh, dan uh, saya pun telah terima ya, surat demand letter eh, daripada Pasir Salak uh, berhubung dengan apa yang saya sebutkan terhadap dirinya uh, so saya nasihatkan mereka uh, biarlah kami uh, uruskan di mahkamah eh. Khalid added that he was warned by the security guards of the group waiting for him but decided to go ahead into parliament as he wanted to debate certain motions including on SOSMA and Hadi's bill. Meanwhile, Deputy Home Minister Datuk Nur Jazlan Muhammad assured that a full investigation will be conducted. First of all, first of all, how did they come in into this area without being invited by somebody? Somebody to take responsibility for them. Number two, did they do acts, you know, that uh, threaten uh, bodily harm on on persons, yeah, and and even worse, if they they threaten MPs. So, uh, and then number three, uh, what uh, next uh, to be done uh, with them? When questioned if there was a need to increase security in Parliament, Nurjazlan said it was unnecessary but the security officers should be additionally strict. We have to check whether they were invited they were invited by Tajuddin or not. You see? They could have they could have come in under a different excuse and then and then uh, you know reveal themselves later. But it wasn't it wasn't invitation by the uh, member of parliament. So that's why we have to do the investigation first and then uh, see whether the uh, CGSO uh, had a security lapse uh, in, 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 their, in, in, in their job. Nur Jazlan described the incident as a serious security breach and said that it may even be probed under anti-terrorism laws if it applies. Now, police personnel on duty in Parliament have lodged a report on the incident. According to the KL Police Chief Tajuddin's son, Firdaus has been identified as one of the ten men involved in the fracas. Dato Amar Singh in a statement said the case is being investigated under Section 147 of the Penal Code for rioting. No injuries were reported but all of those involved must come forward as soon as possible. Past President Datuk Sri Abdul Hadi Awang has tabled an amended version of his motion which seeks to strengthen the Sharia courts. He also told non-Muslim lawmakers not to interfere with matters pertaining to Islam. Busuk yang berkait dengan penganut agama Islam sahaja. Kain itulah perkara agama Islam di bawah bid'ah, dulih mulia, raja-raja, sultan-sultan. Yang tidak sepatutnya diganggu oleh kalangan yang bukan Islam. 
Namun terdapat Ahli-ahli politik bukan Islam Yang saya percaya mereka tidak mewakili masyarakat bukan Islam seluruhnya Lebih Untuk mendapat politikan mileage The unexpected tabling of the bill prompted strong opposition from MCA. Now, I've mentioned before, MCA position is very clear that we can't support a private member's bill, okay? Irrespective, uh, whether it is amended or, it, uh, or not amended, it's a private member's bill. We can't support. MCA will support a government's bill. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Azalina Othman, however, advised MPs not to jump the gun. This is a private member's bill. They tak habis lagi. It's still a motion. So how government to comment? Belum, belum debate, belum vote on. So still premature for government to comment. It's about speaking. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi met with Sarawak Chief Minister Tan Sri Adnan Satim in Kuching and assured him that Hadi's bill is not to pave the way for hudud law. Undang-undang 355 ini memang telah wujud dan ianya pernah dipindah pada tahun 1984 dan Ianya tidak akan dibentangkan oleh kerajaan pada sesi persidangan Parlimen kali ini. The Deputy Prime Minister has already said, this is not Hudud law. If it is Hudud law, we will oppose it. But he just said it is law. Adenan has already instructed Sarawak's Barisan MPs to vote against the bill. Bursay 2.0 has challenged the IGP to show proof that the arrest of its leader, Maria Chin Abdullah, is not related to the Bursay rally. In a statement on Thursday, the election watchdog said Tan Sri Khalid Abu Bakar's claims that Maria's detention under SOSMA was based on documents confiscated from the Bursay office last Friday were outrageous and have no basis whatsoever. It said that it is aware of what documents were taken from the office, so it is absurd to suggest that any of it can be linked to a threat to security. Meanwhile, the Bursay chairperson's sister, Cynthia Chin, urged the government to release Maria immediately. How can she be in, uh, arrested under SOSPA? <coughs> what has she done wrong? You know, she's not a terrorist, she's not a criminal, and... If they say that she wants to topple the government, why bother with electoral reforms? Right? Why go through that so many years? And um, I think the kids were trying to be very strong, and that I really admire her three kids. And um, I was almost at, in tears, but I said, no, I have to keep strong for the kids. And the kids also kept strong for me. We kept strong for each other. Until Sunday, suddenly we heard that we can go and visit Maria. We went and that was the only time I really told my father what happened. After the visit, he went home. He was quiet. He hardly talked. You know? And um, you go inside the house, it's so felt. It's felt. For that, we must keep fighting for Maria's release and we must fight for the abolition of SOSMA. She was speaking at a press conference held by Gabungan Bertindak Malaysia. Maria was detained in a pre bursay 5.0 swoop by police and is being held at an undisclosed location. Also making headlines on Thursday, police have remanded a single mother and her boyfriend for seven days following the discovery of her son's decomposed body and physically abused daughter at their flat unit in Paya Nahu near Sungai Petani. The woman told police that her boyfriend had beaten her two-year-old son to death on November 9th. Initial investigation revealed that the couple who tested positive for amphetamine had physically abused the two children. Proton launched its new compact MPV called Ertiga, the second MPV launched by the company after the Exora. 
The Ertiga is the first energy-efficient vehicle and is a collaboration between Proton and Suzuki. It is available in two variants, the Executive and Executive Plus, and is priced between 58,800 ringgit and 64,800 ringgit and comes in four different colours. The star held the second edition of its Golden Hearts Awards, which celebrates Malaysia's everyday heroes from all walks of life. A total of 13 winners were handed the awards by Transport Minister Datuk Sri Liao Kyung Lai along with a trophy and 3,000 ringgit in cash. This year, the awards had an additional category called the Star Gamuda Inspiration Award towards a moderate Malaysia, which was bagged by University Malaya lecturer Dr. Rus Aslina Idrus and her students for their pop-up store project called Kedai Jalanan. The award comes with 50,000 ringgit cash. In other news, a rescue operation was underway after a platform under construction at a power plant's cooling tower collapsed in eastern China's Jiangxi province. At least 40 workers have reportedly been killed. An unknown number of workers remained trapped hours after the platform collapsed at 7 a.m. local time. The Japanese capital was hit by its first November snow in 54 years. The snow which began as sleet around dawn was sparked by an unusual cold front spreading over the Tokyo area that sent temperatures down to near zero Celsius. Though Tokyo does see snow at least once a year, it usually falls in January or February. An Australian has set the Guinness World Record for the highest basketball shot, launching the ball from the top of a huge Swiss dam. 28-year-old Derek Harron flew all the way to the Swiss Alps with his How Ridiculous team members to score the impressive record from the top of the Moibizen Dam, one of the highest dams in the world. The team couldn't believe they had achieved their goal at just the third attempt. Thanks for joining us on Tapa News. Good night.